careful observation of the sea state can give us very useful indications about the wind blowing outside our area. We could often sail over areas with quite a light wind, but strangely, at the same time, we notice a long period swell increasing. In general, if you get waves, it means the wind somewhere has generated them. This is a sign the captain will have to bear in mind. If the swell builds up when we are sailing, we could come near the area where the approaching wind is blowing, or the wind could be picking up where we are. This is a sign that shouldn't be neglected in any way. Sometimes the offshore winds can have a particular strength without necessarily bringing high seas along the coasts, even though the winds could stay weak. The offshore waves caused by the wind can batter along the whole coastal area, giving way to massive swells. This is what we usually get along the Tyrrhenian and Ligurian coasts, with the southwesterly winds, or with the Mistral along the western coasts of Sardinia. Any time there is a strong wind blowing offshore, the force of the sea tends to spread over quite long distances from the area where the wind is blowing. To make a distinction between the two actions, we will call wind wave, the one resulting from the wind blowing over an actually defined stretch of sea, and swell, the long wavelength propagating over a long distance from where the wind is blowing. When the wind in a certain area tends to rotate and keeps changing direction, even the direction of the waves will be varying. This leads to a state of confused sea. Sailing with a confused or chaotic sea makes it quite difficult to keep the vessel in a stable condition. This is one of the most challenging situations facing sailors. The orography forces the wind to change direction and speed according to the various areas considered, and they are especially important in the straits. These phenomena of refraction and diffraction concern the wave system too. Take the example of this satellite image. It shows a prevailing sea from the north affecting the coastal area. As it bumps against the orographic obstacles, it tends to set from northeast. An observer in that position will therefore perceive a wave coming from the northeast, while the actual sea offshore is from the north. This perception can influence the decisions about how to navigate, as the actual conditions to be encountered cannot realistically be foreseen from the mainland before departure. By means of satellite images, you can observe the phenomena linked to the sea state. In this example, you can observe southeast waves penetrating between the island and the coast. Because of the refraction effect in this area, you will see the wave take the shape of a fan here along this coastal area. The waves will be arriving from southwest, while to the south of the Cape, the wave was originally from southeast. This phenomena is quite frequent, close to the capes, and takes most sailors by surprise as they cannot foresee what situation they will have to expect when doubling the cape. The sea level can change during the tides, and this is visible even when berthed in a harbour, but the Mediterranean tides are usually measured in the order of less than a metre, they are also affected by the weight of the air in the presence of high pressure, when the air is heavier, making the sea level decrease slightly, whereas with low pressure, the sea level will tend to rise a little. The sea level in the proximity of the coast varies according to the prevailing winds. In this case, the wind blowing from the mainland will cause the level of the sea to decrease slightly near the coast. If instead we consider the opposite situation of an offshore wind, in this case the sea level will tend to rise even in ports and harbours. This action can well be observed checking the algae being submerged or floating on the sea. This is the first indicative sign of the prevailing wind airflow, be it offshore or from the mainland.